you can watch them on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, we will be holding them until the end, but you can submit them anytime via the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. Today, I'm happy to bring you Kaylee Dombrowski with the presentation on preparing a feast for primates. Kaylee holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Anthropology and Linguistics from New Mexico State University and a Master of Science in Primate Behavior from Central Washington University. Before joining Project Chimps in 2019, she had nearly three years chimp experience via internships and volunteering with various NAPSA sanctuaries. Kaylee has a passion for nutrition and believes in the old saying, let thy food be thy medicine. In 2020, she became the facilitator of our nutrition committee, where she analyzes and oversees the diets that we prepare for the chimpanzees. Without further ado, take it away, Kaylee. Thank you, Megan, for that introduction and welcome everybody to this nutrition webinar. Before I get started, I'd just like to give you a little bit of background on Project Chimps, especially for those of you who are joining us for the first time today. We are a 236 acre chimpanzee sanctuary located right here in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Georgia. And this facility was actually originally created as a gorilla sanctuary, but in 2015, a bunch of biomedical labs started retiring their chimpanzees from use in research. So those chimpanzees needed a place to go and thus Project Chimps was born. Now our mission therefore then is to provide lifelong exemplary care to chimpanzees that have been retired from medical research. We currently have 77 chimpanzees living here at the sanctuary that we still have over hundred more in the lab waiting to come to their forever home. We've been transporting chimps since 2016 from the new Iberia Research Center in Louisiana, all the way over here to the Blue Ridge Mountains. And for those of you who have not had a chance to come visit our sanctuary, here is an aerial view of our peach tree habitat. So you can see we have five villas, or these are buildings that the chimpanzees are housed in. So we've got Cedar Tree Villa, DJT, Chimps Ahoy, Harmony, and the McGrath Family Chateau. Because chimpanzees are social beings, they need to live in dynamic social groups. So our, uh, all of our chimp groups have a mix of both male and female, as well as various age ranges. Our smallest group is composed of 13 chimpanzees. Our largest group is made up of 19 chimpanzees. The youngest chimpanzee we have here is Kavuli. He's going to be turning 11 in January. And the oldest chimp we have is Greg, and he just turned 41. All of the villas have plenty of complex climbing structures, fire hose to swing from, um, plenty of platforms and hammocks to rest on, and we also have an experienced team of vet and behavioral technicians to monitor the chimp's well-being. Being in sanctuary means receiving lots of healthy foods throughout the day, which is what we're all going to learn about today. And as well, they get lots of daily enrichment items because chimps are very smart and they need lots of mental stimulation to prevent them from getting bored. So you might be wondering, what exactly do chimpanzees eat? Well, here at Project Chimps, we serve our chimpanzees three meals a day made up of fresh produce. So lots of fruit, vegetables, and leafy greens. They also get chow or chow biscuits, so if you have a dog or a cat, you might serve them dry kibble. This is essentially primate kibble. It's a dry biscuit to supplement the produce that provides lots of nutrients. We also then scatter a mix of nuts and seeds and other goodies throughout their enclosures multiple times a day. They get several different enrichment items, which are various food puzzles that have food inside that they then have to solve to get the treats out. And they get a variety of browse items. So these are leaves, branches, flowers, pretty much any other kind of organic plant material outside of their produce. So I'll be talking a bit about each of those items in the following slides. Starting with produce, chimpanzees are naturally frugivorous 
omnivores. That means in the wild, they're eating mostly fruits, such as wild figs and wild bananas, but they also supplement their diet with plenty of vegetation, such as leaves, flowers, seeds, roots, bark, nuts. They will also eat different um, species of insects, and occasionally they'll even hunt for eggs and meat. Now, because wild fruits actually more closely resemble cultivated vegetables in terms of their fiber and sugar content, that means captive diets are made up primarily of vegetables with some fruit thrown in. So I'd like to introduce you to some of my friends here. In the top left-hand corner is Sarah. She's got a mouthful of kale that was actually grown here on site in our garden that we call Project Harvest. The upper right-hand corner is Justin, again with a handful of kale. The lower left-hand corner is Amy. She's got a handful of radishes that she foraged for out in the habitat. And then the bottom right-hand corner is Cassie enjoying a green bell pepper. From left to right here, we've got Luke, Crystal, and Genesis. And believe it or not, all three of these chimps are biting directly into raw onion. So me personally, I like a little bit of onion on a burger or maybe a salad, but chimps will just bite right into onions like they're an apple. Um, if you were to pull every single chimp on site and ask them their top five favorite foods, I would bet that onion would be one of the most popular answers because all the chimps, in a general agreement, onion is one of the best foods that they could get. Moving on to chow. Again, this is a dried biscuit. It provides a lot of protein, fat, and other vital nutrients for the chimps diets. We actually have our produce truck driving away right now, so you might hear a little bit of background noise there. My apologies. So the chow we serve in brown paper bags, similar to how your mom or dad might have packed your lunch in a brown paper bag, or maybe you pack your children's lunch in a brown paper bag. We'll weigh out the chow, roll them up in these brown paper bags, and then serve those out to the chimps. And each chimp has their own individual style of eating chow. So there's the chimps that will kind of gingerly open the bag of chow and take out piece by piece and munch on it. And then we have chimps like Armand in the top right hand corner here who just rip open the bag and pour as much chow as they can fit into their mouth. Now, if your mother was like mine, you might have been told, don't play with your food. But I don't think anybody told Jabari. He is in the bottom right hand corner. That's Jabari with a mouthful of food. And he decided that he had just enough room for a green rubber toy as well. And in this main picture, in the forefront, we have Precious. Behind her is Josh. They both have a mouthful of chow. Chimpanzees have a natural behavior that's called wadging. So in the wild, chimps will collect leaves or moss and they'll find a water source and dip it into the water and then put the leaves in their mouth and kind of mush it up and suck all the water and nutrients out. And then that leaves them with this kind of wadge of leaves that they'll, they'll continue dipping into the water just to suck all of that um, you know, fluids and nutrients out. So that is what Precious and Josh are doing here with the chow. They've got a mouthful of chow, they got their water, and they're, they've got a chow lodge. Scatter, this can basically be anything outside of their daily chow and produce. Um, it can range from nuts and seeds, different types of cereal and other grains like rice, quinoa, couscous, cooked beans, chickpeas. Um, they're, they really love berries. So we have a wild blackberry patch on campus. And when those are in season, sometimes care staff will go out there and pick wild blackberries for the chimps and then scatter them throughout the enclosures. Um, they also really enjoy grapes. And a lot of times we'll freeze the grapes. So that gives them a nice cool treat on a hot day. Um, and they also really like citrus fruit. So 
kind of like onions, that's another fruit that a human wouldn't really think to just bite right into, but we freeze the lemons and we chop them up for scatter, and it's one of the chimps' favorite items. So in the upper left-hand corner, you can see Samira eating a spaghetti noodle, so pasta was the scatter for that day. And scatter doesn't necessarily have to come in solid form, so sometimes we'll make soups for the chimps and we'll place plastic cups and bowls all throughout the enclosure and pour the soup into these bowls. And you can see in the upper right hand corner, that's Rocco. He's got himself a couple bowls of soup and he's kind of climbing to find a place where he can enjoy his soup in peace. And in the bottom photo is Bo on the left hand side, Lance on the right, and they're enjoying a mashed potato scatter. So with every group of interns that comes in, at the end of their internship, we invite them to participate in a mashed potato sculpture contest and care staff vote on their favorites. And then the interns get to cho choose which group of chimps their sculpture goes to. So last winter, we had someone who created a mashed potato snowman sculpture. And this is Bo and Lance enjoying that mashed potato sculpture scatter. Enrichment. This is um, really a topic that deserves its own webinar in and of itself. Um, enrichment can come in a lot of various forms, social enrichment, environmental enrichment, sensory enrichment, but what I'll be talking about today is the food enrichment that they get. So again, these are puzzles that are designed to engage the chimps, mentally stimulate them, and encourage natural behaviors such as foraging and tool use. So this center picture here is Torian using one of the artificial termite mounds that we have in our habitat. In the wild, chimps will come across these giant termite mounds where they'll go out and find sticks and then dip those into the termite mound like they're termite fishing and pull that out and then eat all the termites off the stick. So that's what Torian is doing, except in our termite mound, uh, there's a little secret door that we can get into and there's PVC tubes inside that we then fill with some kind of ooey gooey sticky mixture such as applesauce or peanut butter, honey, jelly, even salsa, um, just anything that really anything that we've got in our pantry. To her left, on the left hand side is Panielle eating some pine cones. So this is another enrichment that we give to the chimps. We'll take pine cones and dip them in some kind of mixture. And then oftentimes we'll roll them in cereal or seeds, or a lot of times we'll save the kind of chow dust, as we call it, that collects at the bottom of chow bags. And then we'll use that in a lot of different enrichment too. And to the right is Almasi. So again, for any of you dog owners out there, you might recognize that Almasi is holding a calm. And just like you would put treats inside of Kong for your dog to get out, we use Kongs. It's one of a favorite enrichment among chimps. Again, we'll smear some kind of mixture on the inside and then freeze it. And then the chimps have to work at it to get all of the mixture out. Um, so this keeps them engaged for quite some time because they really do get every last drop, every last seed, every last Cheerio. They're very efficient. Moving on to browse, this is another topic that could be its own webinar. I actually believe in the past we've done a webinar on our browse program. So if you're interested, be sure to check that out. And again, browse is any other kind of plant material. So on the right hand side, you'll see Lindsay eating a bamboo shoot. They love bamboo shoots. Not super crazy about the leaves, but oftentimes they'll, they'll save the leaves and nest with them. So browse is really just an overall good item for both eating and nesting with. Other types of browse that we use are bamboo leaves, tulip poplar, willow, hibiscus flowers, pine needles, sour wood, wide range of browse that is all grown here on site. So in this left hand picture is Loretta eating some flowers that was browsed for that day. And you'll see Sarah doing another natural chimp behavior that's known as food peering. So one thing that I love about chimps is just their complete lack of personal space. 
Um, I know if I was eating and someone even, you know, whether it's my significant other or my kid or even my cat, if they're up in my face while I'm eating, that can be a little bit annoying, but chimps, they'll just food peer each other um, and you know, not think twice about it. And it's not even necessarily like a, I'm doing this to bug you or to get you to share with me. They're really just kind of checking out the situation is, you know, what's the, what does it smell like? What's the consistency? How is this chimp? Are they enjoying it? Does that mean I'm going to enjoy it? So that is Sarah food peering Loretta. Now that I've talked a little bit about the different items that the chimps eat throughout the day, I'll talk to you a little bit about how we design the diets to make sure they're, how much that they're eating throughout the day is a well-balanced diet. So I'll talk to you a little bit about caloric requirements and body weight. I'll show you a sample menu that of all the foods that they might eat in a day. And I'll talk to you a little bit about balancing the diet with macro and micronutrients. And they give an overall analysis of what males and females are eating throughout the day. So in order to determine caloric requirement, you have to know an individual's body weight. So chimps can weigh between 40 and 60 kilograms, which is about 90 to 130 pounds. So given that the average chimp weighs 50 kilograms, then that individual would need about 1,880 kilocalories per day. Males have a slightly higher caloric requirement, about one and a half times that. So a 50 kilogram male would be getting about 2,820 calories per day. This comes to about two and a half kilograms of produce, which can be broken down into 40% leafy greens, 40% other vegetables, and 20% fruit. And the males here get close to 0.4 kilograms of chow and females get just under 0.3 kilograms of chow every day. So here is a sample menu. As I said, the chimps get three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Breakfast and dinner are both hand served to the chimps. So we have these kind of food shoots or hoppers as we call them. And those are designed that the chimpanzee can put their hand into the bottom of the hopper and we can safely drop them the food and then they can collect that and walk away and enjoy that in peace. So breakfast and dinner both consist of one fruit and one vegetable item. And began, again, because Males have a slightly different caloric requirement. There's different serving sizes. So for breakfast, if the, me the menu for the day determined that breakfast was going to be apples and cucumbers, everyone would get two apples and then males would get two cucumbers, females would get one. And dinner is the reverse. So everyone's getting two vegetables, in this case, carrots. And if the fruit for that day was bananas, males would get two bananas and females would get one. Lunch, on the other hand, is chopped up into bite-sized pieces that is then spread throughout the room that the chimps can then forage for. So in the wild, the chimps would be foraging for their foods, you know, rummaging for leaves, climbing trees to retrieve fruit. So we spread this all throughout the enclosure to kind of simulate that wild behavior. So if the menu for the day said lunch was red cabbage, onion, and radish, Males would get one and a half servings of cabbage, females would get one, two onions for everyone, and one serving or about two cups of radishes for everyone. So I'll talk to you a little bit about how we design the diets to have a well-balanced uh, macronutrients, which are your proteins, your fats, and your carbohydrates. Uh, protein, I think everyone knows, is really important for building muscle, but it's also very important for uh, maintaining your bone and other tissues in your body. And a common misconception is that the only source of protein comes from animal sources, so meat, dairy, eggs, that kind of um, food. But there is actually plenty of protein that can be found in legumes, seeds, grains, and even vegetables. 
fats and carbohydrates, I feel like these get a really bad rap when it comes to diet and nutrition. You know, everyone tries to maintain a low fat diet or a low carb diet, but fats and carbs are actually really important sources of energy for your body. And they also help with a lot of other bodily functions, um, as well as helping with your nervous system and your blood cells. Um, carbohydrates can be further broken down into fiber. So this is really good for your GI tract. It's you know, the excrement that comes out at the end and also sugars that are then um, you know, absorbed into the bloodstream and that's where you get your energy. So any excess carbs that aren't burned at the end of the day then get converted into fats for long-term storage. So if you know anyone who's on a low carb diet or keto diets are really popular these days, um, it's so that their body then has to revert back to the fat storage and burns off all those fats and replaces it with protein. I can tell you these chips are not on a low carb diet as you'll see in just a minute. So in the upper left-hand corner is Eddie. He's got himself a paper braid. This is another enrichment item that we give out um, specifically for celebrations or other special events. It's three pieces of paper that are then spread with peanut butter, sometimes honey, and then braided together. And so the chimps have to um, rip open the paper and get all the peanut butter out. And a lot of times they'll just bite right into it, rip off a bite full of paper and then wadge it like I was talking about earlier. Below Eddie is Danner. He's engaged with a holy ball. This is another form of enrichment. And you can see the concentration in his face as he's trying to get every last peanut out of that holy ball. To the right of Danner is Gertrude. This is another spring celebration that we had. So Gertie is climbing the tree to get this ladybug pinata that's filled with all kinds of nuts and seeds and goodies. And you can even see that she's got a few colorful pine cones in her hands as well. And above Gertrude in the upper right hand corner is Colin. Um, he, this was a uh, fall celebration. So a lot of times after Halloween, when everyone's trying to get rid of the pumpkins, we'll get a lot of pumpkin donations. And Colin found himself a pumpkin and he's smashed it open and is now getting all the guts and seeds and good stuff out. So in addition to macronutrients, we also consider the micronutrients. Um, and there's dozens and dozens of vitamins and minerals that count as micronutrients that are really important for the body. But for this presentation and for my analysis, I really just focused on these six key my, uh, vitamins and minerals. So we've got sodium, this is your salt, which is really important for maintaining your cells and aids in digestion. Vitamin C is very important to protect from cell damage and chronic disease. It's also very important to boost your immune system. Potassium, it helps with nerve impulses, muscle contractions, and regulating your heartbeat. Calcium, I think everyone knows calcium is really important for building strong bones and teeth, but it's also important in a lot of blood processes and helps with muscle relaxation as well. Iron is an important constituent of blood cells, but it helps with transporting oxygen throughout your body, as well as different cell functions, immune system, and brain processes. And phosphorus is another mineral that's important for producing and storing energy within the body. So in the upper Left-hand corner, just moving left to right here, this Oscar engaged with some paper tubes. So yet another type of enrichment that we offer the chimps. Um, it, it's filled with nuts and seeds and he's got to open it up and get it, get them all out. There's also shredded paper, just kind of make it a little bit more different, difficult. So he has to sort through the shredded paper to get every last nut and seed. And believe me when I tell you, they do. Like I said, these chimps are super efficient. They will get every last nut and seed off the floor, even when it's scattered throughout leaves or hay, they find every last drop. So next to him is Panielle. She's got a peanut in her mouth and just a very beautiful smile. How could I not include this picture in this webinar? To her right is Hercules and he's got himself a green pepper. So this was likely breakfast for the day that he took from the hopper and then 
wandered out into the habitat and found himself a nice shady spot to enjoy his breakfast. And then to his right is Noelle. She's got a fire hose cube. So a lot of times when fire departments are looking to get rid of their fire hose, they'll donate it here and we'll either hang it inside the enclosures or we'll fold it up into these fire hose cubes and then stuff it with nuts that the chimps then have to kind of move around and get the nuts from inside. Okay, so moving into the analysis and my apologies, these last two slides don't have any pictures of chimps. Blasphemy, I know, but there was a lot of numbers on here that I just wanted to show you overall just how much these chimps are eating throughout the day. So in order to calculate these numbers for produce, I just took a sample menu from every day of the week, kind of averaged that out. So on the average day, male chimpanzees are getting just over three kilograms of produce, which comes to just over 900 calories from produce alone. The chow, like I said, they get about 0.4 grams of chow throughout the day. So they'll get half in the morning with their breakfast and half again at dinner. And that comes to just over 1,100 calories. Now, scatter and enrichment, these mixtures can vary greatly from day to day, which we want because who wants to eat the same thing every day for the rest of their lives? So um, we really try to vary the not only ingredients, but also the presentation, just to make it a little bit more fun and more exciting for the chimps. So for scatter enrichment, I just kind of took an average of the most commonly used items, such as peanut butter, oatmeal, applesauce, and kind of portioned them out to show um, a rough estimate of how much they would be getting from those items. So in total, chimps are, or male chimpanzees are getting about three and three quarters kilograms of food throughout the day, which comes to about 2,600, just over 2,600 calories. So to put that in perspective for the average human diet, um, the recommended daily allowance of calories is most people base their diet off of 2,000 calories. So male chimpanzees are getting kind of significant more calories, but they're also burning a lot more calories just from swinging through their enclosures, running around into the habitat. Um, most humans I know live somewhat more sedentary life than that. So their caloric requirement isn't as high as the chimpanzees would be. Um, protein, male chimpanzees are getting about four times as much protein as the average adult male. They're getting about 25% more fat, three times as many carbohydrates, and about five times as much carb um, fiber. So then that brings us to sugar. And this is kind of a tricky topic because you might see that they're getting 130 grams of sugar per day um, compared to the human 36. But I want to explain that this is broken up into natural sugars versus added sugars. So your natural sugars would be honey, molasses, maple syrup. Um, and if, if you kind of look at the top of the chart, most of their sugar is actually coming just from the produce again alone. So the 20% of their diet that comes from produce or from fruit, um, that's where those 89 grams of sugar are coming from. So um, for humans, that those 36 grams are referring to added sugars. This would be like processed sugar, you know, just the normal white granulated sugar that I think of when I think of sugar, um, or, you know, high fructose corn syrup. Neither of those we provide to the chimp. So any of these 130 grams of sugar, that's all naturally occurring sugars that already exist in the foods that we're providing them. Sodium, so they're actually getting about half as much sodium as the average human diet, but humans actually tend to get more sodium than they need as it is. So that's not really a concerning number for me. Um, and I've scoured the literature. I couldn't come across any studies that said exactly how much chimps are, you know, how much sodium they're consuming in the wild, but I would bet that it's not nearly close to what humans are getting um, in their daily diet. Vitamin C, the chimps are getting about five times as much vitamin C as humans, as the average male would get. Um, 
just over a thousand milligrams more of potassium, about 90% of the calcium that a, a human male would get. Again, there's not really any studies to say what the recommended amount for chips is, but 90%, that's pretty close. And I think, you know, with some minor tweak, tweaking and adjustments, we could definitely get it to um, meet the human requirement, if not more. And then both iron and phosphorus, they're getting about one and a half times as much as the average human male would be getting for that as well. And here are all those numbers for the females as well. So females are getting about 2.7 kilograms of produce throughout the day, which is just over 2,000 calories. I mean, if you go down the line, you can see all the protein, fats, carbs, all those macro and micronutrient values as well. Okay, so that's all from me, and I'd like to turn it over to Megan and the audience for any questions. Thank you so much, Kaylee. That was so informative. If you do have questions, now is the time to submit them via that Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. So here's one coming in. So besides foods, what types of drinks do the chimps get? This guest is saying that they've seen grape juice on our wish list before. So are there other types of drinks that the chimps get? Yes, um, yes. Yeah. So grape juice or um, a lot of different types of juice, orange juice, grapefruit juice. Um, a lot of times we'll use that to, if they have any medications that we need to serve to the chimps, you know, chimps aren't just gonna take a pill if you hand it to them. So we crush it up and we put it in juice um, and we actually serve them juice every morning to kind of get them used to. Here I'm getting juice, nothing questioned about it. Definitely no medicine that I'm going to, you know, find this juice suspicious. So yes, um, we do have juice on our wish list because um, that is how we serve medicine to the chimps. Um, occasionally, if we find that a chimp is undergoing some weight loss. Sometimes we'll make them a protein shake to, um, you know, kind of just boost their calories and the protein that they're getting to encourage them to gain more weight. Um, some of the enrichment items will mix um, sugar-free Kool-Aid or, you know, sugar-free drink packets and make them ices out of those. So they are getting various, um, juices and liquids throughout the day. I just didn't factor that in because um, it's such a minimal amount. I mean, it's probably like an ounce of juice every day. So um, that was not factored into the diet, but yes, very good question. Thank you. And what about smoothies? Do they like smoothies? Yes, yeah, so that is another enrichment item that we get. Um, oftentimes uh, the food bank will donate boxes upon boxes of bananas. So we'll freeze the bananas and then um, when the enrichment for the day is smoothies, we'll blend those up with some water and then freeze those. And then the chimps have frozen banana smoothies that they go nuts over. Yum. Now, do the chimps tend to share their food with others? Um, this is a really good question. So sometimes chimps, I suppose you could call it um, sharing. Sometimes it looks more like stealing. Um, and it kind of depends on the individual chimp dynamic. So um, we have two chimpanzees, Babs and LB, um, and they are like best friends, close as can be, but it's kind of a strange relationship because Babs will steal from LB. But like I said, it's not always stealing. Sometimes you'll serve LB her chow and Babs will come over and LB will just hand it right over. Um, almost kind of like a food tax, I guess, because Babs is such a high ranking individual. So LB is just kind of securing their relationship. You know, food is such an incredibly bonding force. So she's kind of paying her dues to Babs saying, you know, we're good, we're on good terms, right? We're friends, I've given you my food, then you're gonna protect me um, if there's, you know, some kind of argument or squabble that comes up. So yeah. Um, sharing or stealing, however you want to look at it. That's, yeah. <laughs> nice. Now, do they ever somewhat trade? Um, no, I don't think I've ever seen chimps trade. Um, it's not like, I mean, they're getting pretty much, like I said, 
if if the breakfast is apple cucumber, everyone has their apples and cucumbers. So it's not like there's any um, higher value foods that they can bargain for. You know, it's not like in the lunch the lunch room you might trade your pudding cup for your friend's bag of Doritos. And nothing like that. No. Everybody's got the pudding cup. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Now. Have you run across any foods that the chimps do not like? Um, occasionally, so the chimps all have their individual personalities and preferences. So um, some chimps, like I said, overall, they really love onions. Some chimps aren't necessarily too fond of kiwis, but then there's other chimps that, you know, when it's kiwi day, they love it. Um, um, some chimps, you know, it kind of depends on the day too. You know, some chimps will take their bell pepper, you know, maybe 50% of the time. So if they're feeling it, they'll come down to the hopper for their pepper. And sometimes it's kind of give or take. Gotcha, nice. Here's a good question. Here's from a guest. They said, I learned at the brow station during discovery days that the chimps use bamboo leaves for floss. What other unexpected or unintended ways do the chimps make use of their food, brows or produce? Um, wow, that's a really good question. Um, I suppose other than, you know, I talked about lodging a little bit. Um, uh, the, the bamboo, like I said, they're not, they, they love the shoots, but not so much the leaves. So they'll nest with that a lot of times instead of eating it. Um, Yeah, I, the, the, I've never actually witnessed the flossing. So that's a really um, interesting observation. I'm definitely gonna have to keep my eyes out now. Yeah. Awesome. So with Halloween coming up, do the chimps ever get candy? Definitely not. So this would fall into that added sugars category, high fructose corn syrup that I was talking about. So um, candy, as much as we love it as humans, I myself definitely have a sweet tooth. Um, but we, if, if it doesn't really have a nutritional value, we don't really hand it to the chimps because we definitely want to keep them as healthy and, you know, keep their diets as nutritious as possible. But, um, we do, you know, have celebrations where they get lots of extra enrichment. So all that peanut butter, you know, those banana smoothies, um, you know, they still get sweet treats. It's just not the processed candy. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks, Kaylee. That's it for the questions right now. If anybody else thinks of any more questions, you can send them to us anytime at events at projectchimps.org. We'd like to thank you guys for joining us for our webinar series. And we want to give a special thank you tonight to Tofurky for donating 78 holiday roasts for our Thanksgiving feast. That's one for each of the chimps, 77, plus one that we can serve to the staff who will be working on the holiday. You can help provide some of the side dishes by visiting our Amazon wish list and be on the lookout for our social media posts that highlight the specific ingredients we will need to round out our annual Chimpsgiving meal. Until then, we thank you for your continued support of the Chimps. We couldn't do it without you. Yes, thank you, Megan, and thank you everyone for attending this evening. As we're wrapping up, I'd just like to say a few final words. So in order to provide all the required food, housing, medical care, and enrichment activities for a single chimp is about $22,000 a year, just for one chimp. And we've got 77. So we're running on a multi-million dollar budget, but we are a nonprofit sanctuary. So that means that all of our funding comes solely from viewers like you on donations, um, not just money donations, but you know, pumpkins and all kinds of food items on our wish list. Um, it only costs about $7 per day to feed a chimp and $3 to provide enrichment. So even just a small $10 donation, it goes very far away. And you can consider uh, sponsoring a chimp for $250 a year or about $23 a month, which is less than a dollar a day. So if you're interested in learning more ways to donate or support us or to get involved, you can visit our website at www.projectchimps.org. Thanks so much, everybody.